And Scott, let's start off with the energy sector and particularly energy stocks because we, you know, we talked last year about this idea of they were the big outperformers so far this year. They're probably the big underperformers. A lot of that somewhat tied to the pace and the direction of where oil prices and other energy prices go. Yeah, I think, um, it, you know, first of all, thank you for having me. But um, the last couple of years, um, you know, the oil stocks really have done uh, incredibly well. But that was after a decade of, of terrible performance. And um, so you would expect, and, and you know, we, we would expect uh, a bit of a pullback here, maybe some sideways moves here until, um, you know, in, until there is a, a breakout or breakdown in the crude market. We don't you know, we look at it as being in a trading range, roughly $72 to $83 at this point in time. Um, and if you, you know, if you if you look at the term structures out there, really it's uh, in, in a general backwardation. So there's the, the market looks to be fairly well in balance. Um, maybe not so much uh, overseas, uh, where I think uh, you know that's where the fireworks uh, potentially could be because of the. Um, you know the Russian situation, and and really, uh, you know, the West shutting off, yeah, or trying to shut off the Russian production. Mm -hmm. I'm curious also, when you look back here in the United States, there's an increasing conversation among investors about the role of renewable energy, the transition, the slow transition, frankly, Scott. And if you take a look at the traditional energy usage versus that transition, what is the inflationary impact overall? What does this mean for commodity pricing and that in terms of what it means for the overall economy? Sure. Really, during times of inflation, commodities tend to do very, very well. And remember that you know, you know their reserves are kept in the ground or in a mine, and and so there is a um, you know there's a fair amount of leverage that happens uh, when prices rise. But also remember that um, the labor costs and, and other input costs uh, they are rising for commodities producers as well. Uh, no one will produce uh, at a at a loss. So. Commodity prices, uh, real asset prices in general, in times of inflation, they tend to do quite well. And then we have uh, really some other support out there. We've got a, a, a federal government that is spending uh, heavily, uh, maybe not on petroleum, mm -hmm. but they are certainly spending heavily on uh, clean energy, which requires a lot of things that um, we don't have enough yeah. of. We don't have enough lithium. What? We don't have enough copper. Uh, yeah. In fact, we don't have a you know we don't even know where we're going to get the copper in order to produce the the amount of EVs that, that we have uh, yeah. queued up. So, well, let's talk a ahead. little bit more, Scott, about some of those opportunities in that space with regards to EVs and just renewable energy as well, uh, because there's obviously been a big race into that space and obviously being able to source the materials, but also, of course, I mean, just the general uh, ability to sort of take that raw material, convert it into whatever we need uh, for the end product, and the idea that there are a lot of companies along the way that you, in theory, would tend to benefit from this process. That is true, um, and and at least at the start here, uh, you know, we we've, we've been starting this for for quite some time. Uh, it, it's going to be it's it's going to be a bumpy road here. It's going to be a bumpy road because, quite frankly, you know, we, we see that we have the the front runner Tesla, and then we have several uh, both uh, traditional uh, car makers as well as uh, new EV makers who are. They're trying to, to set up their supply lines and their and sourcing and and uh, so I would I would say that this will be bumpy at best and unfortunately we probably want to see some of these companies um, we want to see the fallout until we can see them produce positive cash flow and potentially earnings so in in the start this is going to be subsidized it's all going to be government subsidized and it has been already but I think in the future. You know, every car maker out there has bought in that that, that we are certainly going to, to be a, a much higher percentage of EVs. Now, Scott. I'm not sure if we're going to hit our goals because mm -hmm. uh, actually doing that is harder than saying it. But uh, 
Uh, you know, we're certainly pouring a lot of money into this. The IRA, the... Uh, right, the, right. You know, uh, Scott, <laughs> on the IRA, I want you to double down on that idea here because sure. even traditional energy investors do see a lot of benefit to the Inflation Reduction Act, to the investment by the Biden administration into the energy transition. But to the point you're making here, what is the overall impact in terms of the inflation that it might add to the economy? Well, once again, when commodities are in short supply, you're going to you're going to have a um, the support for higher prices. Uh, it takes a long time to go out and identify new new stores of of uh, copper, and you tend to find them in places where there is no infrastructure to mine them. Sometimes they're in countries that are not friendly uh, to to mine them out of. So it takes time to 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 find these things, and it takes a lot of money. Um, that is not what the IRA, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, is is funding. You know, they are they are funding projects, but not mining projects. Mm -hmm. You know, they are they are funding new technology. They're funding solar. Right. You know, they they're funding battery. Uh, you know, battery development and storage of power. Um, but you know, with higher commodity prices, as we've seen in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, they're not locked out of the capital markets. They were locked out for years, but. There is capital available Scott. for them, and uh, and you're going to see more and more of uh, of the uh, uh, you know new stores of these uh, commodities to be found and, right. and produced and brought to market. 